so good to see you all this morning who have come out to pray. We thank God for his blessings over your life. And just before we get into prayer this morning, I just want to share a text with you. And uh, this text is, I think is very important. It said uh, in Galatians chapter 3, 27, for as many as ye have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And look at this one. It says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And this is what patriarchs and prophets said about that. He said, no distinction on account of nationality, race or caste is recognized by God. He is the maker of all mankind. All men are of one family by creation and all are of one through redemption. I say, praise God. Christ came to demolish every wall of partition, to throw open every compartment of the temple court that every soul may have free access to God. His love is so broad, so deep, so full that it penetrates everywhere. It lifts out of Satan's influence those who have been deluded by his deception and places them within reach of the throne of God, the throne encircled by the rainbow of promise. In Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. I say thanks be to God. Do you need a reason for rejoicing this morning? Of course. This is the blessing of God. So this morning, to get started, we're going to go into what I call a one-sentence prayer. All I want to do is to open your mics and one by one, as much as we can get into this time. And there's something that you want to praise God for. I will start. I just want to praise God that he has broken the wall of partition that I am called his son. Let's continue. In Amen. the mighty name of Jesus, because I know that God is good and mm. he is awesome in all his ways and mighty is his hands this morning. Amen. I am grateful and thankful for life yes. that I'm alive this morning. Mm -hmm. And I'm still in the reach of mercy and a hope of eternal life. And that's what I am grateful and thankful to God for, for mm -hmm. being so good to me. Amen. I just want to praise. I just want to give God praise this morning to see another brand new day. And again, for his marvelous grace. Mm -hmm. Oh, Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be your high and holy name. This morning, God, we come before you, not because we are worthy, but because of your grace and your mercies that you have extended unto us this morning. We just want to give you thanks. We want to thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to be alive and to be in our right mind. We want to thank you, God, for being our father, our friend. And Lord, we come to you this morning unworthy we are. But dear God, we just want to magnify your matchless name. Dear Father, I ask that even now you will rid me of sin as I come on behalf of your people. Dear Father, we know that we are living in a sinful world, but we are glad to know that you are there for us. And so this morning, Lord, on behalf of your people, we ask that you will forgive us of our sins. Dear Father, this morning I'm supposed to 
call upon you on behalf of all of us because we recognize, Lord, that we need a heart of compassion. We are so selfish as Christians. And so this morning, Lord, we ask that you will baptize us afresh, take our hands and our hearts and our feet and mold us and fashion us, Lord, into what you want us to be. Dear God, when you want this hurt, you have never choose who to be around. But Lord, we as people, because we tend to just cling to one set of people. So Lord, we ask that you remove selfishness from us and put your right spirit within us this morning. Father, we come before you in a time that sometimes we don't even know what to pray for. But Lord, we know you said that we should not be fearful and that we should call upon you. And so that's why we are here this morning because we recognize that we are living in a time that we need to draw closer to you. And so Lord, we just ask that this morning, Lord, you will stop by here and that you will visit each one who is on this platform this morning. I ask, Father, that you will cleanse us. Help us to know, dear Father, that we should be an example to others. You ask, Lord, that we should go out and that we should be disciples for you. But because of our foolish ways, Lord, at times we don't even know what to say to others. So we pray for love. We pray for humility in our heart. I pray, Father, that you will baptize us afresh this morning. And that, dear Father, when we go out, others will see you in us. And they will be drawn closer to you because of us. We pray, God, that you will continue to abide in our heart. Continue, Lord, to lead out in our life. We pray, Lord, that you will be with Brother Dawkins. Help him, Lord, to continue to do the good work that he's doing. But, Lord, of self, we can't do nothing. So we ask, Lord, that you remove self and put your right spirit within our hearts. Continue to bless us and to keep us. We pray, God, that you will cause your face to shine upon us at all times. And we ask, Lord, that when you come, we will not be a cast out of your kingdom, but Lord, we will all be a part of your glorious kingdom that you have gone to prepare for us. We just want to thank you for your love. We just want to thank you for your grace. We want to thank you for your forgiveness. And we just ask, Lord, that you will take over for our life. Anoint us afresh this morning, we beg of you. And we ask, Lord, that our selfish ways, our foolish ways will be removed in your Amen. Amen. Father, we just want to come before you once again in humble attitude to first ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness, Father, of our, all of our sins. And we pray, Father, that you would just be with us in such a special way this morning, that we would feel your presence in our lives. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassion fail not. As thou has been, thou will forever be. We just thank you, Father, for great is your faithfulness to us. You were faithful in waking us up this morning. You were faithful in allowing us to just be a part of this conversation with you this morning. We pray in a special way for our church, the Providence Church our pastor, our leaders, our members, those 
There are some that are right now sad because of loss of loved ones. And there are some that have financial issues. There are some that have health challenges. Father, we know you can answer all prayer. And so we pray that you will answer each member of New Providence Church and to deal with their specific needs. And then, Father, we pray that you would make us humble and a desire like Paul, the Apostle Paul, for souls. Father, we, you put us in a situation with the pandemic where we can communicate to people without even seeing them. And so we ask that we would use our devices, our phones to contact people, to let them know of Christ's love. We ask that we would, every place that we go, that we would share Christ, that we would live for Christ, that you would give us this desire to save the, the sick souls and that souls may come to know you before the day too late. We pray, O oh Father, that you would be with our conference and its programs for evangelism and that each member of the church would participate in the evangelistic program. We pray, Father, your blessing on each of the persons here in this prayer group. Whatever their needs, Father, I'm asking that you supply all of our needs according to your richness and mercy. But strengthen us and give us that hope in your coming that we would not want to be lost, but we would also want to bring our families, friends, co-workers to your kingdom so that they too may be saved. We pray, Father, for but the Dawkins and the organizers of this group, that you would continue to keep them humble so that they may continue to share your gospel by allowing each of us to just communicate with you through prayer. So strengthen them, give them good health, give their communication system, their phones, their computers. We pray that there would be no issue with them and that they would continue to work so that we can be a part of this program to just call on you. We pray, Father, that you would just be our guide in this perilous times. We pray, Father, for the Moxie family as they put him to rest tomorrow. We pray for all the families of the church that is sad now because of loss of loved ones. And we pray that we may continue to reach persons before it's a day too late so that when you shall come, we all will be in that kingdom where we can live with you throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Father, we continue to ask that you continue to be with us, give us good health, give us the resources to go out there to reach others. We pray for this country in a special way with this pandemic that you would just prepare each of us uh, for your kingdom. We know and sometimes we are just full of fear because of the COVID-19, but you be asked that you give us assurance that you will be with us through sickness, through health, through good times, through bad times. And so we ask that we fear not the pandemic, but we fear you. And we pray, Father, for your blessing upon us this day. Help us as we serve you and worship you, that we may be drawn closer to you each and every day. And may we give you the praise, may we give you the honor, may we give you the glory. For we all seek your presence someday, Father, in your eternal kingdom. And so we ask that you prepare us for your kingdom. Help our focus strictly to be in going to meet you in eternal life. And we thank you for it. 
we praise you, we glorify your name, for this is my prayer, through your son's name, Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, amen. Sympathizing, empathizing, Jesus. We are gathered this morning as children that rally around the throne of a great king. We are not worthy to call upon your name. But you have made every privilege available to us by the sacrifice of the cross of Calvary that we may come at thy feet, O oh God. For you said, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. O oh Lord, we ask you to have mercy upon us this morning. We thank you, dear Lord, that you have allowed us to come together once more on a holy and blessed day, sanctified by yourself. For there is none like you, O God. For you created the heavens and the earth. You created all that is within the earth, O Lord, and the fishes and the sea. Oh, how great and marvelous are thy works, O Lord. For, Lord, if we would ponder on thy ways, O Lord, thy wisdom is too great for us. Neither, O Lord, that our life would allow us to even begin to understand the complexity of your kingdom. But, Lord, we petition your throne once more. That, Lord, that, thy, that thou and thy heavenly throne may ask of the Father, of our souls, O oh Lord, that our names may be written in the book of life. We pray, O oh Lord, that if our names are blotted out, Lord, that you would replace it right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you for the presence of your Holy Spirit to fall fresh on us right now. Lord, we ask you to place the shadow of your wings around us and over us right now as we lift up prayers to you. Lord, you have heard the prayers of us. And Lord, you know their hearts and you know their minds and you know their souls. Lord, you know the very strands upon our head. You even know us from when we was in our mother's wombs. Lord, some of us this morning are facing many difficulties in life. And sometimes, oh God, that can blur our vision. Lord, sometimes that can, that can shorten our faith towards you. But this morning we are asking you for a fresh anointing that it may fall over us once more. That our cups may run over, oh Lord, because you have given us our daily bread. This morning, dear Lord, I ask you in the name, and no other name, but your precious name to reach out to families that are under my voice this morning. Lord, I am not worthy to petition on behalf of these people, but Lord, sanctify me and sanctify them as we come before your holy tabernacle this morning. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your patience with us and your kindness towards us, O oh Lord. Sometimes, Lord, we think the very things that you have provided for us for granted. But, Lord, there are others out there who are facing much more turmoil, O oh God. And, Lord, we need you to open our eyes that we may see the marvelous grace that you have extended upon us this morning. As Brother Campot mentioned, there are some, O oh Lord, who are in the hour of bereavement. Lord, there are some who do not have food on their table. Lord, there are some who are sleeping in shocks. Oh God, there are some who are sleeping in buildings that not even animals would sleep in right now. There are some who are homeless, oh God. Lord, help us to be thankful in all things. Help us to be thankful for the good and the bad. Knowing that even though the affliction may be many, that you will deliver us of them all. 
Lord, I bring this morning this prayer ministry to you this morning. We ask you, dear Lord, to give us the insight, Lord, that we may reach heaven's gate. For David said that I'd rather be a doorkeeper, O oh Lord, than to dwell in the tent of wickedness this morning. And so, Lord, we ask you that your word may edify us. Your word, O oh God, may sanctify us. Your word, when called to remembrance, O oh God, will guide us to these dark and evil days that we are in, O oh Lord. Help us to see, O oh Lord, the light at the end of the tunnel. Lord, that we may continue to walk to that marvelous light. For Lord, you are good, and your mercies endure from forever. One generation to another generation shall they speak of your goodness. And oh Lord, when we least expect it, like a thief in the night, so you suddenly appear, and the world shall be judged. Those who are in the grave, oh Lord, they shall be wakened. What a marvelous power! within your hands, O oh Lord, to form the dust back into clay that they may be judged with a new body, O oh God, how marvelous art thou, O oh God. We thank you for the power. We thank you, O oh God, for your presence. We thank you, O oh Lord, as the wind solicited to the east, to the west, so is your spirit amongst us this morning, dear Lord. We pray for the speaker, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh God, that as we continue to worship you on this day of holiness, Lord, that our hearts may be converted, that our souls may be pricked, O oh Lord, that the day would not be an ordinary day, but a day of thanksgiving and praises unto your name because what you have done for us. Lord, we pray for those, O oh God, who continue to be in the valley of decision. Lord, help them out the valley and give them a mountaintop experience in the name of Jesus. We say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Lord, you know where you have brought us from. You have brought us a mighty long way there, Jesus. Help us to recognize where you have brought us from, for we all were shaped in and born in iniquity. But Lord, it's by thy grace and by thy covenant, O oh God, that you continue to keep. For you are Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. You are sovereign over our lives, O oh Lord. Help us to humble ourselves under thy feet. And help us to recognize it's not by title, neither is by position, but it's by the power of your Holy Spirit that hearts are converted. Help us to recognize that you are the truth, the way and the light, O oh Lord. We pray. Help us to recognize that you are all that we have in this world. And if you turn your back towards us, we shall fall as dumps upon this earth. If you take your spirit from us, O oh God, there is no life in us, O oh Lord. Mm. For every breath we take, it all belongs to you. We Help pray, us God. to recognize, O oh Lord, that we are leasing in this world, O oh God, and that nothing that we have is our own, O oh Lord. Amen. But the choices that we make, O oh Lord, it makes the difference. Whether we will be grafted in or grafted out, O oh Lord. We ask you, dear Lord, to give us patience. Have patience with us. Help us to have patience with others, O oh Lord. Help us to be a welcoming church this morning, Jesus. Help us, O oh Lord, to love not by lips, O oh God, but help us to love with a fervent heart. Because we have known what you have done for us. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Because without them, Lord, we are nothing. And so, Lord, we present this service in your hands this morning. We ask you, dear Lord, may the holy angels of heaven reach out in every home this morning, oh God. Great Father. And that whatever may be 
besetting us away from you this morning, Lord. May your angels bring peace and love and good tidings mm -hmm. that Jesus is still alive. Oh, Lord, and that Jesus pray. is still on the throne. We yes. thank you, oh God, in your most holy and precious name. Amen and amen. <laughs>
the new province and to the real harvest. This week is certainly a pleasure to be here with you this morning. There is no greater joy for me than to spend time with God, with his people. Let us pray, uh, Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise this morning because you have truly brought us from a mighty long where you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And for that, we give you thanks and praise. You are truly worthy of the praise that we give to you. We ask you, God, as we go into this session this morning, that our hearts will be blessed and that we'll be drawn closer to you. Forgive us for our sins, because we have failed you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to read for you a passage from 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. And it reads, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets um, unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, Thine handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow these vessels abroad of all thy neighbors even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out, and it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said to her, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children on the rest. Now, Elijah asked this woman a very strange question, and, it, and it's the question that I would like for us to answer even this morning. What is it that we have in our houses? What do you have in your house? And I, I want you to answer that question in the light of your particular situation. You know, if you look carefully at what we are going through personally, and at, at what others are going through who are around us, we would be able to see that we are in a crisis situation. And we look carefully at the woman's predicament, we would see that she has various different things going on in her life. First and foremost, she has lost her husband. Right now she is in bereavement and I know many of us can identify with her situation because we have lost loved ones. And if you have not lost a loved one, if you live long enough, all of us will have to go through this bereavement process. Why? Because of the sin problem that exists in this world. Because of sin, we are, are, are faced with the loss of life. We are faced with the problem of death. Now, what is the solution to the problem of death that we face in our lives? You and I already know the answer to that, and the answer to that is none other than the person of Jesus Christ. But, but we have a role, a part to play in that solution. Here is what I'm trying to say. There are many of us that live a certain lifestyle, our family members, our friends, those who are closest to us are, are watching us uh, and they are governing their lives according to what we say, according to what we do, according to how we live our lives. Yes, we may come to church and yes, we may praise God in the sanctuary, but our lives outside of the sanctuary tell a different story. There's a song that says, uh, 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 
Are you living the life you sing about in your song? Uh, uh, um, are we truly living right? See, we, we, we are looking at the death that is occurring all around us. And death in itself is not the real tragedy. The real tragedy is that many persons around us, many persons we know personally are dying without Christ. That is the real tragedy because we are God's people. We know that when he comes, he is able to deal with the problem of death. We know uh, from reading the scriptures that he has overcome death. So death is not a problem for him, for those who would have died in him. The problem is those who would have died without him. And I, I want you to take a, a good long look at your life and, and think about the persons that you know now who are alive. Think about the persons who would have died in your, in your life. What kind of life, what kind of testimony was your life to them? What kind of testimony is your life to them? Some people are struggling. Uh, some people are going through some serious mental and emotional crisis and, and they would give their life to God because they know that he is the only answer, the only solution to their predicament. But when they see us and how we live our lives, it, it creates a roadblock for them and they are not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Music